pleasant hello greetings to you all. Today's video is going to be entirely inspired by my nails. They're strawberries. <laughs> Basically what I want to do is draw a bunch of fruitsies and it's been a while since I did like a fasims which stands for filling a spread in my sketchbook. Fasims. <laughs> I thought that's where I usually take my sketchbook. And usually my iPad or Pinterest or something. And then I fill my sketchbook spread with something I haven't drawn in a while or something I've never drawn before using references. So that's exactly what's gonna happen today, but with fruit. All right, well, let's just start doing that. I'm gonna start with strawberries because that's what's on my nails. You just gather some references. I'll put them all on a Pinterest board so you can use them too if you're looking for them. Hmm, do I want to just, ooh, okay, I found the picture. I was like, I'm not sure what I want. And then I found it. I also have a piece of cardboard behind the paper so I don't ruin anything under there because I'm gonna be using markers and I'm gonna guess I'm gonna need some reds. Probably gonna have to do a little swatching. Since this is a red fruit that we're starting with, there's definitely no problems using a, a rose-colored Colorace pencil. I thought this was pink. Do I have a pink one on my desk too? Yeah, I do. So if I need something a little bit more subtle. We got that. All right, I'm gonna start with this little strawberry that I found. And I wanna draw the little stem and everything. We're gonna have it like come down off the top of the paper, I think. So it's got these little curly leafy bits and then the heart kind of shape. And they've got lots of little divots with seeds inside. Now from this photo that I'm using, you can't really tell what the leaf shapes are, but I can kind of see them in a different reference, so. Maybe stick one of those in here. Lots of this green stuff too, so we're not using only red. I think we can start adding in some color. And I don't really think I need to erase anything just because we're gonna be using reds. <laughs> Though I don't think that'll be a problem. Let me see what lipstick red looks like. There's a lot of tones of red, especially in the shiny bits and like the deep pockety bits of the strawberry. We're gonna need quite a different. That's gonna work for the shadows. That's also a shadow red color. So maybe I need to venture into the pinks. Let's start with that. This is Sardonyx. I'm just gonna fill in the whole thing because any super highlights, I can use the white gel pen and anything that's slightly highlighted will probably be about this color. So it's perfect. Here's our strawberry, we're done. Now the stem actually has a bit of a pink hue to it. So I'm gonna actually just fill that in before we put on the green. Okay, now we need to add some depth down here that kind of comes around and up before we start adding in all of the like divots, you know? So what I need is like a tone between these two. How about Karan? Ooh, there she is. So basically this part of the berry sticks out, right? So there'd be shadow in this region. And we've got a shadow. I'm actually not sure how to do this, but it makes sense to just kind of fill it all in and then add highlights later. I'm gonna blend it out with that pink, especially around here, soften that up. I can definitely go to this, which was lipstick red and add even deeper pockets back here. Blend that out with the prawn, soften up the divots and darken up the area as well. I'm gonna kind of color in the green next. Go right over that pink. Oh, that looks great, yes. We kind of went over some of the green spots here with pink. I also need to be a lot darker of a green. It's actually pretty good. I don't know how to do this without ruining it though. Go back to the lighter green. I think I need like a mid-tone is what I need. Colors aren't that off. I think I still need something like in between. Interesting. Maybe a little line art. I'm not sure what my plan is yet. <laughs> we definitely need something a little bit darker just to kind of act as the seeds. I'm gonna go with our darkest red. I just add little blips, teeny ones inside of our divots. Definitely need some kind of highlight. Basically, you need to add little highlights here. Ooh, it's working! It's working! Rejoice, the gel pen works for once. Ooh, I can kind of lighten it up. <gasps> that would work. Okay, that means I can do it over here. I can add like the highlight, right? And then boop, lighten it. I might also, sometimes gel pen lets you put marker on top. You can try that. Right now I went a little overboard, but I'm gonna try going over with the Sardonyx. Pink it up a little. Now that I know I can do that, I'm gonna add little highlights to the bottom of these divots. 
Now I will grab Lipstick Red, which is our second to last darkest red. Kind of go all along the outside edge. Add in shadows, slink out. So just smooth out the transition. I think it looks like a strawberry. Oh, we need to work on this just a little bit. Blenderoony. Could definitely go with a little bit more of a leaf somewhere. There we go. Go strawberry. Oh no, I didn't put that in the right spot. Oh my gosh. <laughs> There's our strawberry. Another fruit I would love to try. Honestly, I would love to do another strawberry. I would love filling this whole page with strawberries. So I could add another one like coming down here like a stem. Another one here. I really liked how I was kind of figuring out how to add the highlighty bits. And I kind of want to think I might want to do that again. So we'll leave this space open for the potential of little strawberry friends. All right. Meanwhile, how about an apple? Actually, we just did a red fruit. We could do a green apple. Ooh, Granny Smith. Oh, this would be perfect. It's just literally just an apple. But I feel like this could fit really well in a here location. So they're kind of flatter on the top and then they kind of curve circular to the bottom, more flattish at the bottom. And then you have a stem. What is your favorite fruit, by the way? I really like black grapes. My favorite is, I call it a fruit salad, but it's literally just strawberries have and then <laughs> black grapes thrown in it and you stir it and it's beautiful. The rich, deep purples of the black grapes and the bright red. Oh, it's just so pretty and tastes. Great to boot. I think I'm gonna add a leaf because there's some space. Now the stem actually has that same sort of like pinkishness, but actually it's more of like a brownish pink, which I feel like I should be able to do. I'm gonna use that same, actually I really like this green. Fill in the stem. Actually, I'm gonna do prawn. That might make the brown I'm looking for. And then the stem as well. I'm gonna start with that lighter green. Oh, I should have erased. <gasps> Luckily I didn't sketch too much inside. Okay. So I want this edge to be the lighter green. And I also need like a big space about there for the shimmer. And then we can transition into this. Leave space for the shine. I might just fill in the whole thing with this. Because anything else is kind of darker than this. We should be fine. Okay, now that I've done that, this ended up way darker than the rest somehow. I think what I'll do is actually use what I used for this because that looks great for the <laughs> shadow color. And hopefully that kind of works out for the best. Basically there's a shadow here. This all needs to be way darker. What about this? This is literally dark, but put a little in here. We need a mid-tone in here. Like this. Yeah, it's a little more saturated. Perfect. One out. The edges. Kind of just layering the same color that I already layered. Kind of slowly building it up. Add a little texture. I want something now between this and was it this? Okay, and then finish up the highlight here. Kind of just crisp up this one edge. It doesn't need to be as blended. We'll let that dry and maybe color over it. Now we can add a much deeper shadow to the bottom here. And hopefully we can blend her out pretty good. I think I've layered a lot of green in this one spot. I'm hoping when it dries, it evens out a little because it's looking like I went too dark. What if I just kind of take the colorless blender? Just kind of push everything a little. Maybe I think it's a little too late for that. All right, but we got an apple. Oh, I haven't colored in the leaf. So that's like a darker green. I'm going to start with this color. Let that dry. Add in some deeper spots and blend that out. Now that it's done, like I just want to go around the outside edge, crisp it up. There we go. I might even be able to go with like an earthy sort of tone and go over this. I could probably even take like a really light sort of brownish yellow and add a little uh, texture to the apple. Just little dots of it. Especially near the top. I feel like that's where I usually see it. Looks like an apple. All right, next fruit. We've done red. We've done green. Feel like we should do something other than those two colors. Thinking a watermelon. Oh wait, that's both those two colors. <laughs> All right, I'm thinking, oh, how about an orange? I could have done a rainbow of fruit. I have missed an opportunity here. We could still put the orange there and it's, you know, it's relatively following the Roy G. Biv. Yeah, we're definitely doing an orange though. This one's curving this way. This one is straight. So maybe something curving this way. If we hang the orange, I feel like they have very long leaves. 
What if we do a leaf going in front of our orange? And maybe pull this down a little. We can put the fruit a little bit more on one side. Now, if we're gonna have this, there's a tangent here. See how the end of the orange lines up perfectly with the end of this leaf? That is a tangent, and we try to avoid those. So I can either move the leaf higher, or I can move the leaf lower. Now they're perfectly circular as far as I can tell, you know, unless you get like a defective one, one with character. <laughs> so we'll keep it pretty circular. Slightly erase the whole sketch. I'm not sure about this leaf still. I think because their leaves don't really pop up so much and at least the references I'm seeing, they're more hangy dangly. I'm gonna try and draw that again. Just more dangly. I could probably even stick like a little leaf up in here. Little dangly leaves. Okay. Now for coloring, they're very bumpy little guys and very bright. The stem should probably be very close to this color. So we can do that first using the celadon green for the stem and then layering it with a little bit of pink. Layer that with a little bit of the pink to create a brown. It's pretty good. I'm nervous about the orange color. If the way it gets shiny, it turns whiter. So there's also like hints of a little bit of green in some of these. This back leaf can totally be just this color with nothing else. Honestly, that would work for the whole thing. Again, the, the leaves do that same thing where they don't like change hue. When they are got light hitting them, they literally turn white and I'm not really sure how to do that. So I could just try not coloring in the white bit. Probably going with like a super pale green. It's kind of interesting. A little too green, I think. Could probably go in with this though. There you go. That looks pretty good actually. Let's see, I'm gonna need some oranges. Oranges are actually kind of yellowy. So let's just do like a quick coat. I suppose I could put it where the highlights are as like a sketch to figure out where the highlights are gonna go. But I've already kind of colored the whole thing. So that's not happening. I also probably should color in this leaf. My bad. I don't have a reference for this one, so I'm kind of just winging it. Go back to that darker one. Blend that up. It's fine. All right, back to our orange. I'm gonna go with this Napoli yellow. Start just figuring out where the darkest parts of the orange will be. So there'll definitely be like a shadow under this. I haven't been recording sound! Sorry, but hello. Welcome to the good audio quality again. So basically, I'm taking this next orange color and I'm finding the shadows. I'm gonna start sketching in the shadows. Let's see, where are the highlights actually gonna be? And one here, and then around that area. I don't think layering it is gonna cut it. I need it darker. Let me try this. Oh yeah. And even texture would be good because orange is a lumpy. Still seeing too much of a circle there. So I'm gonna go over with our orange again and remove that harsh circle edge. Might need to wait for it to dry. When you're working with like really light yellows, you can't always see the actual color until you let it dry. So we're gonna do that. Other than that, I kind of want to go a little more orange. Try and add a little shadow. Blend that out with the next darkest orange. Hopefully while it's still juicy. I do want to add more texture as well. Kind of just need like a slightly darker version of our like base orange color. I haven't found it yet. It's kind of more fluorescent, so I'm hoping it kind of like blends. It's not, it's not blending. So we'll soften that up. So not that. What if I just use a yellow on top? Like a dark yellow. Give it some bumpies. I need to move that shadow over a smidge. It's looking more like that hyper realistic where it like looks like what you think it looks like. You know what I mean? Like oranges in reality don't look like this. But you look at that and you know it's an orange. If that makes any sense. That's the vibe I'm getting from it. I'm gonna add more texture. That's probably good, right? I can try the white gel pen just to add more. Oh, that is, I guess it's not a gel pen. <laughs> this is the Posca pen. I definitely want to go over those with like a yellow, but can't quite do that yet. I can clean up these edges. Now that I've done these two, they are like more super shaded <laughs> than this. I almost feel like I should add a little more depth to the strawberry, but I also like it how it looks. 
That's probably it for the orange look done. Kind of gives me a peach vibe just because of this crack, but it's fine. All right, let's find another fruit though. Do something yellow. <gasps> a banana could be fun because you can add those like brown spots, you know? We have this big space. You could put a banana like this, like. Nice old banana. I'm thinking a singular banana and maybe just kind of pushing it up this way a little. Leave some room for maybe something here and here. I'm just thinking composition wise of the page. I don't want it that close to the top. That's kind of ugly. Let's make sure he ends around here and then it curves. Show that banana shape. And then they're kind of square on the tip. And then the end of that part where you cut it. Looks a little too much like a chair. We need to curve this bit. Is this improving it? All right, let's lighten this. Let's start with a nice yellow. Out of these, I really like this color. Okay, so I'm gonna color the whole thing with this. A little green at the stem, and we'll add some browns here, and then figure out a little speckly action. Just figure out the shape first. We just have to fill this in. And like all the other ones, I'm sure it doesn't matter how patchy this first layer gets because we're gonna be layering and layering and layering and layering. Also, just occurred to me, I need to take this guy out and put him over here. And just add a little second coat. All right, so that's like the highlight section. So this top area will be that really light yellow. So let's make sure that's a little bit more even. Although I'm sure we'll be adding another coat. Then we need a slightly desaturate. Actually, in some of these references, it's more saturated in the shadows, but we need to like separate this plane of the banana. So I'd love something very similar in the value, maybe a little darker, and then either more saturated or less saturated, and that'll make our decisions going forward. Don't want to go too orange though, because that's gonna start looking like the orange. Let's just try this first. Blend that a little. I do want a pretty harsh edge. I should probably even go a little darker in some areas. Maybe like near the bottom. A little shadow. I could probably use this shadow color at this part of the banana. And blend outwards. Now, in some of these references, since this part's curved, there's actually like a slight shadow in the middle of it, but not on the edge. So I feel like I would use this color for that. Kind of just keep it right down the center. Layer a little more there. Now, I think I blended it out too much because now I don't see that edge. So we're gonna have to add that in again. I'm also gonna look for our green color to lay over that. I want something kind of light to start out with so we can just kind of blend it into the yellow. And then we can move a little darker as we get to the top. And then the very tip of it can be a little bit more green. And then the tip of this can be very brown. Actually, let me try that color. And I can color in this little guy. It needs to be darker. There's a little shadow here. Mm, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Just some weird lines in here that I'm not overly fond of. I think we could add some brown spots though. Little speckles. Maybe even with the other brown too. At the very tip. I'm trying to make tinier dots. Switch back to that even darker color. And just chisel away at some of this shape just because it does bleed out a little on this paper might even take a little of that green as i see in this reference a little hint of green down here i think i actually want another shade of brown in here just so that i feel more comfortable adding even more dots Ta -da! okay I'm calling it no more touching the banana. We gotta let it, let it live. Meanwhile, I need to figure out what the next fruit's gonna be. I kind of would like to do some kind of blackberry or something. The only problem was I think I'm gonna end up going too dark and then you're not gonna see all the like individual shape of the blackberry. We could do pineapple, which would be really fun because it's a very pretty outside of a fruit, but we haven't done anything blue. Let's do blueberries and then see if there's room for the pineapple like here, if we do this. Then we can have it kind of coming off from up there like we had with these two. Not a lot like grapes. Could just do grapes. It's like the biggest fruit here is the smallest, but everything else is like roughly the right size. Let me think. All right, so I've made my decision. We're nixing the pineapple. I've decided since all the fruit are like roughly the right size, that I'm not willing to do that. So we're gonna put a plum in here. They're basically an apple shape. Beautiful. There, there's your plum. Now I would like to move the blueberries over so they have maybe the same sort of space along this edge. Now, do I want them in slightly different shape? I kind of would like it to feel like uh, this shape. Let me 
make my way down this shape. They also have these like little pieces. Like if you broke off some of the blueberries, there'd be a little stem. And figure out where all those little guys go. Seems like they're mostly falling down, but some of them seem to not. There's a couple tangents in there, but I don't know how much I care. <laughs> I'm gonna be completely honest. Maybe just add some more leaves so it looks like it kind of goes upwards that way. I'm feeling happier already. I'm gonna color in the plum first because it's so dark. I'm kind of excited about it. So I'm gonna try and add the shiny blue in. But it's almost like a little area on the top. It's like a sort of pearlescent color. All right, now we need like a light reddish purple. I feel like this is gonna work really well for like the sh more shadowy bits. But I wanna start lighter because I'm too scared. We'll start with pink. Just to get the first layer down. And uh, yeah, I have no idea what I'm doing. I might go over this just to bring it into the color scheme. I'm gonna grab this. Start adding in shadows. Oh, that is gonna be, need to be way dark. Maybe just leave a little, little shimmer and color in the rest. I don't know, I've kind of got a feel for how to do this. <laughs> we'll see if that benefits me at all. Go over with some purples. Maybe like a fluorescent pink. I think I need to go over that with a pinkish purple. Hmm, something about this just looks like a mess. I might add a deeper shadow. I just go over the whole thing. This really bright, vivid, reddish purple. This is so transparent, it's not gonna like lose my highlights. And then from there, maybe find some desaturation near the bottom. I'm wondering if I should go over it with like a warm gray. I do like how it has those bright, rich highlights. I feel like I'm gonna go over with like maybe a gray at the bottom. Blend that out, please. Ooh, 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 ooh. I lost the blue at the top, but we can try something. Just adding like areas for it and coloring those in with blue and seeing what that looks like. We can try it and also clean up this edge. I want you to be blue. I think it might be time <laughs> to step away from this one. Oh, nope, still touching it. What am I talking about? I'm only making it worse. There's our plum. Enjoy it. We still have blueberries to do. How do I go about that? <laughs> Good question. Ooh, there's so many lines on there. Will I even know what I'm looking at? So basically, I can cover over everything with like our light blue color. Let's try just coloring one with this and seeing how that turns out. With that dry a smidge, we can color in the most inside bits. It almost has like a little dot in the center. I like darken up the very center of this. What I need is like kind of in between. Kind of just go around the outside here. Right. Maybe I need the like gel pattern. We'll let that dry and then go over that with one of the light blues and see how that works. Meanwhile, I can use one of the mid-tone blues. Color in this back blueberry. Let's try another one. And the dark inside the little crown. Hey, okay, that I like. All right, so let's define some of our actions here. I'm using blue gray 02 for the base of the blueberry. Then I use pale blue for a little saturation. And then for shading, I think I'm using blue gray six. And then I also have pale grayish blue, which is like somewhere in between those. So let me try that again. I can blend out with that base blue. And then I feel like I should wait for that to dry because when I try to add the darker stuff, it like bleeds out if it's still a little moist. So I'm gonna jump to this sky and do the same thing at our base. This is our shadow color. Oh wait, now we're gonna need to jump back to the light color. We'll do the same thing for the other guy. We need a little more texture. Can I do that with like the saturated? Seem like they have like lines on them. A saturated color just to see the difference. Deep berries. Where's the colorless blender? I think I went too dark. Not sure if it'll help. We'll try and lift a little. Let's go back to the original plan. I was using the saturated color, shading the berries, blending that back out. And then this guy. 
Probably add in a little stem. So the stems look like green and then they go to like a red and then they turn into the blueberry color at the very tip. So like little areas that are busted and they're pink. We're gonna use our sardonyx color in the very ends and go upwards. Find a green and blend that into it. And a little bit of blue, a lighter one. Ooh, that looks kind of pretty. And then the leaves must start with that same green and then maybe go a little darker. Maybe make that one a little darker. The little leaves. I feel like we need something in the back. We just kind of sketch one in. And maybe some brown. Pink. A little bit of green. This is also a leaf. Adding some depth to these leaves. Some more blue. We're filling some of these gaps. Something feels off. Like there's too much. Like it goes from too light to too dark. I could make it all just a little darker. Maybe. I don't know. Would that help? Ooh, also, I think I want to do the gel pen thing to uh, refine some bits. When that dries, obviously go over that. This one, if I just make them all a little darker, a little matchy matchy. Ooh, yeah, see, I like that better. I also think a little leaf right here might be handy dandy, just like popping out. Good job, leaf. All right, are we done? Holy moly. I feel like the blueberry might be the weakest, just because it looks the least like the reference. But I might be able to clean that up a little by going around the edges. I would like like a desaturated color, maybe to go over some of the background berries. Just kind of push stuff backwards. I don't know. I'm gonna call it there. Ooh, I didn't do these. Do I want to? No, we're calling it. We're calling it. That's it. I am very proud of it though. I think the orange or the apple is my favorite. I think I had the most fun doing the banana. I think the apple turned out very realistic, which kind of freaks me out when I look at it a little bit. The orange, I think I just like the best. I like the way the orange color has that contrast between that deep green leaf. So I really like that. And honestly, I think I just like these leaves a lot. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you guys for watching and coming along with me as I fill the sketchbook spread with fruit. Let me know if you've ever drawn fruit, and if you do, is there a specific fruit you like to draw? Because I know I love citruses. I feel like strawberries are very popular. Fruit are really fun to draw. They're just gorgeous. They're like flowers that you can eat. Oh, now I'm thinking about edible bouquets, which I've never actually had, but they look beautiful. Anyway, I'm getting off topic. Thank you guys for watching and coming along with me as I filled another sketchbook spread. I'll see you guys all next week, and I hope you have a delicious evening full of waffles. Bye!